I'm Chris Mack. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Micro Nanolithography, MEMS, and MOEMS, JAM3. The scope of JAM3, the Journal of Micro Nanolithography, MEMS, and MOEMS, is, is very broad. Uh, in a very simple way, we could say it's uh, all things related to making small, interesting things. In particular, how to manufacture small, interesting things. What kind of things? Well, there's MEMS, it's in the title, Microelectromechanical Systems. There's MOEMS, the merger of microoptics with MEMS, so micro-opto-electromechanical systems, uh, but also biomedical microdevices, uh, microfluidics, sensors, actuators, of course, integrated circuits, and all kinds of very small devices. Now, very small is morphing into very, very small, so micro is becoming nano, and JAM3 is here to help our constituents make that transition from the micro world to the nano world. JAM3 helps the field of microlithography, MEMS, nanolithography, MOEMS, microfabrication in general, uh, through the publication of leading, advanced, state-of-the-art scientific papers to help in all these broad areas that JAM3 covers. We cover things related to the operation of these devices, the manufacture, of course, the, uh, and fabrication of those devices, the reliability, the testing, and metrology of those devices. A big area is lithography, the patterning, materials, processes, tools, designs that are used in microfabrication, um, but also, as I said, metrology, and even the operation of these devices. You know, not every topic with micro or nano in the name really fits in the journal JAM3. For example, transistor design, uh, design of integrated circuits. These fall into the category of microelectronics, but they really don't fit into JAM3. If it has to do with the patterning that goes into those devices, then that's where JAM3 starts to come into play. So there's, there's many uh, biomedical uh, devices and nanophotonic kinds of devices that are better served uh, in other journals. But when it comes to the fabrication and the patterning in particular uh, of those micro devices, that's where JAM3 comes into play. In order for a work to be published in a peer-reviewed journal like JAM3, the most important thing is the work must be novel. And if it's all been done before, it may still be good work, but unless it's novel, it's not going to get published in a peer-reviewed journal. If the work is novel, it must also be important. Of course, you can do something new that nobody really cares about. Uh, so we want things that other people will care about. So we look for importance in the work. Whenever you submit a paper, it should include a cover letter. And it's very important that that cover letter include a description of what's novel in the work and why it's important, why readers should care. Not only in the cover letter, but early in the paper itself, abstract uh, and, and introduction, you should explain what's new and why it's important. And finally, if you have a novel topic that's important and it falls within the scope of our journal, you still must do a good job of communicating the importance and the novelty of that work to your readers. Now, if you don't do a good job of communicating, we can help you. That's what the review process is all about. We'll make recommendations for how to make the paper more readable and more informative. Uh, but it's still going to be up to you, the author and authors, uh, to make sure that you make this paper uh, teach what you know, what you learned in your research to the readers. And that's the real goal. How can I teach uh, this new idea to the readers. JAM3 covers a very broad range of topics within a variety of industries and these industries tend to move very rapidly. There's lots of changes very quickly. In the semiconductor industry it's Moore's Law. We're constantly shrinking every couple of years to smaller and smaller dimensions. As a result there's always some new fabrication technology, some new lithography and patterning being used. New materials, new uh, imaging techniques. On the MEMS and MOEM side, the most exciting developments are in new applications and there's constantly new ideas about what you can make a MEMS do and a MOEMS do uh, in adaptive optics, micromirror devices, etc. The scope of JAM3 is constantly changing at the detailed level. 
because of all of these new and exciting areas of development in our constantly changing industries. But the overall scope of lithography, metrology, MEMS, MOEMS, and microfabrication that encompasses what JAM3 is all about, that's been pretty consistent for the 10 years, 11 years that the journal has been in operation. And I suspect it will be a similar consistency going forward. However, uh, there's nothing that will stop us from changing in response to the needs of our community. The readers and authors tell us what they need JAM3 to be about, and we listen and we'll change as appropriate. You know, SPIE has two major ways, not only ways, but two major ways in which uh, the SPIE community, the authors, can communicate the results of their research to their uh, community. That is through conference talks and proceedings and peer-reviewed journal publications. The conference talk is very important. It's a fast way to disseminate information and to collaborate with colleagues from other areas and communicate what you've been doing. A proceedings is an archival copy of what happened at that meeting so that we can look back and say, yes, this is what happened and, and this is what we learned when we watched that talk. These proceedings are very important for that, but they're not peer-reviewed. And so the peer-reviewed journal offers another important venue for disseminating information, uh, where we know that the content has been vetted and reviewed by peers and is, meets a certain level of quality. So these two means of publication are complementary. That's why SPIE has, and JM3, has established a very specific policy that allows conference proceeding papers to be submitted to JAM3 for publication. Now, it's not just publishing a conference paper, not at all. It's taking that paper and submitting it as a peer-reviewed journal publication. Often that means major modifications to the conference paper before it's ready to be submitted and certainly the review process almost always results in changes in that paper. As a result, the peer-reviewed journal paper that comes out the other end is not the same as the conference proceedings paper that may have been published before. But because of SPA's unique position in sponsoring both the conferences and the peer-reviewed journals, you don't have to make a choice of either or. Either present at a conference or submit to a journal paper. You, in fact, can do both. For all of you out there who are working in the field of lithography, metrology, microfabrication, MEMS, MOEMS, please consider submitting your work to JAM3. This is the home journal for these topics within the SBIE community and the broader scientific community. We have a wide readership of people who care about these topics and you're sure to reach the readers that you want by submitting your paper to JAM3.